My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am President and CEO of the Center for Training and Career, CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. Now we have our own facility, and so it enables us to expand programs in response to the needs of the community. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. Looking for the training and skills you need to get a new career? Call Center for Training and Careers today. That's CTC at 408-213-0961 and start building your new career today. Wapili Rose Amador Laveau, and this is Native Voice TV, so welcome to the show. Well, you know, I was just on my iPad here, and when you're on your iPad or your iPhone, what do you see? The Apple logo. So it's my pleasure to introduce Carlos Perez. You drew the Apple logo, but we have a lot to talk about, so welcome to the show. Thank you, Rose. I'm very honored to be here. Thank you. And I think of you when I see the Apple logo. <laughs> So let's see, We're, we've gone on a long journey from Teotihuacan, the land of the pyramids the, in Mexico City, or near Mexico City, yes. to Silicon Valley. And how did this artist make that journey? <laughs> well, uh, as natural as possible, I think I've made the journey. Uh, ever since I was a little child, there's been a, a creative spirit within me. And I think that uh, I've allowed and let it sort of guide my life. And it's allowed me to be fortuitous or whatever you want to call it, to uh, come in touch with certain things in, in life that uh, have gone on to be something great, I guess, in a lot of different ways, however you me me measure greatness. How did you, when did you know you were an artist? I would say realistically, probably when I was uh, a teenager. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, the in around, I was about seven years old. Um, my aunts, uh, for whatever it is that they saw in me, they began to encourage a creative process to exist in my life. And they started sending me to the local artists uh, in our little town in Jalisco where I lived. And um, uh, again, I don't know how it all came about, but every Saturday, I now was going over to the home of, not only was she a teacher at our, at our grammar school, where I went to grammar school, but she was also an artist. And my aunt said to me, well, you're gonna start on Saturdays going over to uh, see the, the professora, and she's gonna teach you all about art didn't have any clue about what it was that I was going to go do, but I went to go do it because that's what they wanted me to do. I don't know if it was to keep me out of trouble uh, or whatever, but it was, uh, it was an experience that I'll never forget uh, because it was something that I was introduced to by this professor or by this professora 
that it was in the most natural way. But she, were you, she were handed you a me good artist as a little kid? I mean, did they I see have, that in you and I, say, you I, know what, he needs, he's an artist? I have no idea. I, I can't tell you whether I was a good artist or not. <laughs> All I know is that they wanted me to start going to Saturday classes with this professora that uh, was a painter, and uh, she began to nurture that in me. And, uh, and it was, she did it in such a wonderful, uh, uh, pleasant way. She just simply said, Carlitos, and in those days they actually called me El Peloncillo. Pelon, have fun. Sit there and enjoy yourself. And, and she gave me uh, pencils, color pencils and paper, and, and I began to draw. And, and, and she said, uh, what do you like? And I says, well, I like monkeys. She says, well, draw, draw a monkey. And so it, I wish I had the drawing, uh, but I don't. But it would have been nice to have somehow kept it um, uh, for, you know, keepsake. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I, I, I now collect all my grandkids' drawings, and I'm making sure that they, they, they have them when they grow up. You keep all those tissues, huh? So tell I us do. about this tissue, this famous <laughs> tissue. <laughs> well, uh, in 1970, uh, uh, it, it all started uh, when I graduated from San Jose State from the graphic design program in 1974. Um, I was picked up as an, as an apprentice at Regis McKenna Advertising Agency for a period of two years. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, for a period of six months. It was a six-month apprenticeship. And I was fortunate enough because I graduated in the top three of the class. And so they gave this honor to those three individuals and they gave them an apprenticeship somewhere so that they can get their career sort of off the ground. I was picked up, my portfolio was picked up by Regis McKenna, uh, advertising agency in Palo Alto, who became uh, in 1974, uh, 76 roughly time frame, became the ad agency of record for the Apple uh, account. Um, and um, uh, I actually, I, after my six months, there was, no, there was uh, no way that they could hire me at the time. So I went away for two years working somewhere else. And during that, th that time, I was uh, actually learning how to, to do more things on a three-dimensional level, creating exhibits uh, uh, for, for the industry. Um, Two years after that, I get a phone call from a, a member of Regis McKenna uh, agency asking whether I would be interested in maybe taking on a job there. Uh, so uh, this was around 19, now around 1975, 76 time frame. And right around that time is when all these things were beginning to culminate for, for Apple. And a lot of the high tech was uh -huh. beginning to get off the ground. Uh, in fact, Regis is very well known as being the PR person in this valley, right. the Silicon Valley, for being one, one of the early pioneers in, mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in the whole um, marketing and promotion and advertising uh, aspects of how do you pr promote and how do you advertise, how do you uh, market uh, these high-tech companies. And in those days, there were a lot of sort of experimental things that were going on that uh, Things like uh, 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 Nago, for instance, was an artist that was used uh, in the early infancy of Intel, for instance, to promote them. And so there, there was a, a need to sort of find uh, the, these different uh, styles of, of design that, that would, uh, they would lend a hand to support the marketing efforts of these companies. So did you get to meet Steve Jobs? Yes, I actually did get a chance to, <laughs> to, to meet Steve. Uh, on occasion, uh, he would come in and uh, look over our shoulders. Uh, we had a chance to converse about the things that we were, we were doing. Uh, and on a couple of occasions, he also had you know, very strong words to say about uh, <laughs> the things that we were doing. Um, this is the startup days then. Yeah, about yeah, yeah, oh, so yeah. Was he a very hippie? Was he, he a hippie? <laughs> he, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. He, he came in, long hair, uh, torn the, of course, you know, you got to remember this was the 1970s. Right. <laughs> so it, it, he really did feel right at home uh -huh. uh, in terms of the way we all dressed in the 70s. My hair was long too. 
and his hair was long. Um, and um, uh, it, they, they still had their shop out of the garage. And um, uh, my understanding from the ad agency side is that uh, Steve came in asking to see if uh, Regis would take the account. Um, Regis uh, let him know what, the, what, the, uh, what, what his fee was uh, to, to take on the account. Uh, Steve went away to raise that money and, uh, and then came back shortly thereafter to, uh, to uh, hand him a check. Okay. And uh, the rest is history. So let's see what you drew. I think we have a picture of it up here on the screen somewhere. And there it is. Yeah. So first of all, I want to say that I do not take credit for the design of the logo. The, the logo was designed by my senior uh, graphic designer that I worked under by the name of Rob Janoff. Uh -huh. He is the designer of the Apple logo. However, following that meeting that they had with Steve Jobs, uh, where they presented him of various uh, different options uh, for consideration, um, they brought the, the, the boards uh, to me and said, Carlos, we'd like for you to go ahead and, and render these uh, to finish artwork. And so that, then that's, you drew it. <laughs> I ended up doing all the refinements, all the little, little nuances that needed to take place to, to make it happen. And then we have the tissue product. And, uh, and oh, uh, <laughs> for, 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 for whatever reason, um, uh, when I left the uh, agency, I asked uh, whether I could hold on to various different things, not just Apple things, but various different things, the projects that I had worked on for my portfolio. And, um, and I, I, I had a, um, a need to go out and, um, and, and look for work and so forth. And so uh, the, the portfolio that you created was the work that you had done, and I ended up with uh, the, the tissues. And where's the tissue? I think we have the tissue up there somewhere. Ah, there it is. Yeah, there's there it is. The 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 tissues. Uh, a lot of times, these things end up in the garbage can. They probably would have if you hadn't taken. Well, it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, what what once you've sort of done the work that needs to be done, this is all an interim process that artists go through to develop something, mm -hmm. and it's just a process to get from point A to point B. And once you're done with it, you deliver your deliverable, which is a, a piece of. Uh, finished artwork, which is in those days it was all hand done and inked and drawn. Um, once that's done, the, 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 the tissues are really uh, in material. They, they're a lot, like I said, a lot of times they Unless get thrown away. Unless it has the Apple logo on well, it. <laughs> no, no, well, the, the, the bottom line is who would have known? Right. Who would have known? I didn't know uh, who, the, how successful Apple was going to be or not sure. be. Uh, and that goes for any client that we work with uh, throughout my artistic history. Mm -hmm. You never know where things are going to go. I've drawn a lot of other logos. Um, Let's take a look at some of your work. I was really fascinated to learn that you designed the Mexican Heritage logo. And um, what is this right here? This, this is, uh, uh, the mural is titled La, The Artistic Mestizaje. Uh, el, mesti el mestizaje artista, and it basically it's it's the confrontation, if you will, that happens when two cult two cultures collide, good, bad, or whatever they happen, and uh, and so this I was commissioned to do this from the artistic point of view, tell us what mestizaje means. Well, mestizaje means is the blending of two cultures. Of, of, of whether it's forcefully done like it was uh, or, or not. Uh, it, it's, it's simply what happens. Through my blood runs mestizo blood. And where I'm is indigenous. that piece? It's at the Mexican Heritage Plaza. Oh. Uh, it's, it's in the, in the main uh, quad outside. Uh, it's an ex exterior uh, multi-panel mural uh -huh. that represents on the one side the, the Spanish contribution of the artistic mestizaje and on the right, the, the, the Mexican uh, uh, contribution of the artistic uh, mestizaje. So on the one hand, you have people like Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo, and so forth, uh, Chicanos like uh, Yolanda Lopez. And on, the, on the, and on the left, you have people like Velazquez. You have people like Picasso, and so forth, that contributed to this mestizaje. 
And you also designed the logo for the Mexican Heritage yes. Plaza, and yeah. I saw the, I think we have, have it here somewhere yeah. here, the. And, 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 the, and that. Oh, and the flags. Well, the, the, now. That the, was for what now? The, now this was for the dedication of the, the memorial to Cesar Chavez. Oh, at San Jose at, State. At the San Jose State. Uh, okay. the, these I was uh, uh, commissioned to design these uh, banners and uh, a lot of the uh, materials that they needed for for that event and uh, so this is uh, something that I created and I actually uh, worked on that project yeah did you yeah, uh, did. yeah it was a, a uh, great project of course uh, 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 the the very famous muralist Baca mm -hmm. is is the artist that mm -hmm. that uh, that uh, was commissioned to to do right. the final piece right. yeah Okay, and there was a couple other pieces I wanted to see that you could explain to us what they are. Now, this one is my favorite. Tell, tell us about this. Well, um, this is a series of work that I've been doing that have to do with the things that nurture my life. And, and they're, they're metaphors. They're, they're metaphors about the, the sustenance that gives us all life. Uh, the sun, obviously, being one of the most important sustenance of life, especially in our in our culture, the El Sol is the most important deity of all. And, uh, and then there's the corn, there, there, because it's native. Uh, the corn is a, a, you know, native to, to the Americas. And so th therefore, that, that's one of the emblems. And then, of course, there's water and air as part of the, the image as well. This particular piece is actually, uh, uh, it's a piece of what I call recapitulating my life. Uh, for a long, long time, a period of over 40 years, I lost track of my father, who lives in, uh, outside of Mexico City. Uh, my, my mother left my dad when I was two years old, but for the long time, I've had a longing to go back and, and, and re reaffirm my, my, my life with my dad. In 1992, uh, surprisingly enough, 1492, 1992. <laughs> I, I, I went back to Mexico to, to not only reestablish my roots, but also to reestablish my relationship with my father. This, this, is, uh, this is a piece that I did. Uh, as you see me there, I'm, I'm in a fetal, fetal position, actually on the street, right outside the home in Mexico City, where I was born. I was born at home because my father was a doctor and he actually delivered me at home. And, uh, and uh, so, so I went back to Mexico, I photographed myself in this manner, and then I, I uh, also set the fire because I'm a very firm believer in, 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 the, in the process that uh, we must sort of uh, come to ashes to become something else. And uh, sort of the, the whole principle of uh, you know, from ashes we rise. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, giving honor to our, my indigenous past, uh, the, the Aztec dancer that's there. Uh, so I did a whole series of pieces. There's approximately four pieces that deal with my early life uh, and in, in my adult uh, life and then and re, re sort of affirming some of those things in, in my early life. Okay, did we have any other pieces that we, oh, that's it, okay. So, you've gone through a whole transformation, I guess, through your artwork and back, yeah. <laughs> it seems like, huh? Yeah, 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 that seems the way that life takes you. Um, you know, you go out to seek out the world uh, wholeheartedly. I know that for me, I've always uh, have, have had the, the desire and the passion to, to uh, go out and be as, as adventurous. Uh, my, it was something that was instilled in me by my, by, I was raised predominantly by, by, by my, my mom's sisters, my aunts and my uncles, because my mom, uh, uh, after she, she left uh, uh, my, my dad, she came to the United States to find uh, resources, if you will, for, for our livelihood. And, uh, and eventually we, in 1960, uh, made the trek here to the United States ourselves. I, I, have, I do have to say that I had a little bit of a difficult time 
with the language uh, during that time because I was predominantly Sp Spanish speaking. I, I didn't, uh, it, when, when English was spoken, it was like Charlie Brown listening to the adult. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> it was like that uh -huh. for me. And so I had no connection to the English language, couldn't understand it for anything. I asked my mom to send me back. So I went back to stay with my aunts for another few years until she came back and uh -huh. demanded that I come with my brother and, and her to, to the States. So, so did you go to high school here? Or yeah, there? no, I went to uh, uh, grammar school, uh, Zachary Taylor Grammar School in Stockton, California. And uh, I went oh, to- Oh, that's right, uh, we have that history. Yeah, <laughs> I, I went to uh, uh, junior high school at uh, Marshall Junior High School. And then I went to Edison High School uh, in Stockton, and then event eventually junior college there at Delta Junior College, and uh, made my way uh, the summer of '72 to Stanislaus State for that summer, and then I and then I was accepted at San Jose State, and I came to San Jose State, and the rest is history for me. The rest is history. I've been here since 1972. Wow. And I'm 63 years old. This year. Well, we have we have a history of uh, we connected because of drum and bugle corps, drum and bugle <laughs> which corps. is very unusual. Yeah, yeah. Right, you were in the drum, the, the, the <laughs> vanguard, the and I was in the commodores. The, right, and and right. we had no idea knowing each other in the community <laughs> this long. And Steve that, was in the vanguard. <laughs> yeah, and Steve was also in the vanguard as well. Yeah, and of course. We looked up to the Vanguard because you guys were tremendous uh, <laughs> uh, 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 drum corps and uh, you guys were always placing first as, lo as far as I can remember uh, back in the uh, early, uh, well I was in drum corps from about 67, wow. 1967 to about 1970, roughly when I graduated from high school, that was about the time that I began to sort of leave the drum corps behind and move on to the next uh, you know, period of my life. You know, if you started in art back with your aunts or when you were a kid, what did did you always connect to art, or did always. you lose it somewhere? No, Cause we were talking always, about always, I'm just wondering, yeah. So, um, uh, so you said we, you also did running in school. You, you ran track. I, I and stuff. Was, uh, so you've been involved I, in a lot I, of activities. I, I was a, a sub five minute miler. Uh, I ran my best time in the mile was four fifteen. Wow. Uh, so a decent runner. Um, and uh, uh, I also was involved in drum corps. I've always been involved. Uh, it was always very important in my mom's eye that we be involved in community things to keep us basically from Out going <laughs> the, the, down the wrong path. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, uh, the track and field, I, I, I played uh, a bugle of all things. I played a bugle even though I was a drummer I didn't play drums in drum corps, uh, but I did play drums in a in a, in a band. Oh, you did. Uh, so, um, I, you know, as a as a youth, you're you're wanting to find all the right niches and so uh -huh. forth. So, but in, in terms of my artistic career, mm -hmm. in terms of my visual art, in high school, I I was involved in high school art uh, projects. I was in 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 in, in a class. I also was very fortunate at Delta Junior College that I actually got the chance to study under one of the greatest artists of California's history, and that was Wayne Thiebaud. Wayne Thiebaud uh, is uh, considered a pop artist uh, of, of the of 20th century, and uh, now deceased. Uh, but uh, I was, uh, again, you know, uh, things have happened in my life uh, where I look back on them and I say, gee, how fortuitous that I had that opportunity. But, you know, again, it's just, I think it's what we seek out to do within us, within our spirit, that uh, either those things are drawn to you, or uh, I, I, can't, I can't imagine that they're just haphazardly uh, happen. I, I just think that they, they're just meant to be. And uh, so um, I, I just listened to, to that spirit and I go with it and it's brought me to where I am today. And so how, what would you advise, advise uh, the kids of today, uh, you know, follow their dreams, um, probably stay involved because that's what kept you motivated and kept you involved in the community. Sure, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, the likes that you have as a, as a young, Person, I think that as you, if you, I would encourage you to make them passions, 
make them so that you want them so much in your, as part of your life that you can't live without them and that, uh, and that life feels, feels empty if you don't have those things. And go out and, 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 and work at it. Of course you have to work at it. I, I, whenever I work with young people, I always tell them it's very important that you know your craft well. That's a must. No doubts about that. You've got to know what you're doing. Number two, hey, let's face it, it's who you know in life. And number three, fortunately, you have, you, you'll have a lot of luck along the ways. And not to give up. Oh, yeah, no, never, because never. Because there's always no. those well, obstacles. Well, the passion keeps right. you from giving up. Right. If you have the passion and the desire, no way are you going to want to give it up. You want to have it for the rest of your life. And people always tell me, well, Carlos, when are you going to retire? Retire from what? I love what I do. Yeah. I'll die with the brush in my hands. <laughs> well, that's a good way to go. <laughs> well, congratulations on all the work you've done. And, and I was just so fascinated by looking at some of uh, your work. And I says, oh, he did that. Oh, he did that. I didn't know he did that one. And, you know, because there are things that I see around the city, like at the Heritage Plaza, like those flags, you know, and just things, and different logos I saw. And I, mm -hmm. I was surprised. Well, they're really nice logos. You know, I saw that you, you actually did them, you know, and. Thank you. You've made well, impr an imprint in San Jose, in, in Silicon Valley. It, it's, uh, it's all sort of part of the course, so to speak, you know. I just have enjoyed doing, being involved, uh, helping the community in whatever way I can to, 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 to give back. Uh, and it's not even so much about giving back. It's just really about giving, giving of oneself about the talents you have so that it could be used effectively and, and, and to, to better, better uh, a community that you, you, you have a heart for. Well, you've really influenced our community. I'm proud to say I know you. And that an indigenous Chicano drew the Apple logo. I mean, that's really something to say, you know? And it, when I heard that, I was really impressed. <laughs> it's funny, I like to think about it that uh, a, a, a little Mexicano, a poor little Mexicano, came all the way to the United States so that he could draw that Apple logo. All right, well, congratulations. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, it's, it's my pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining us and like us on Facebook, because we'll like you back now. <laughs> but we all have pictures from the shoot and we'll be putting things on YouTube and so forth. But uh, tune in next week and we'll see you on Native Voice TV. Good night.